So my Deborah, we're taking a little hiatus from uh, sh from Shari Ora. We ask for Gunis from Rabbi Yosef Jikatilia. We're still with him, and we've been how many shoes we have him? Almost ninety, yeah. Wow. I think the most in the globe. Yeah. Yeah. You think I'm joking with you? Huh? Oh On the globe. Yeah. Amount, amount, of shooting. amount of shooting. Yeah. On the globe. But we have a small request from a good uh, sponsor, donor, and listener uh, to uh, Ari Musayev to make this shiur. His father, he asked me specifically with a Ramak to my Devara. He said, Please, I said, Yes. Kidarki Bakodesh. So, this, this shiur is Liru Nishmat Shlomo Ben Shifra and also Rufu Ashlema Saraba Tsuria Tsuria and Lezivuk Hagun Bemra de Karov, Le Susanna Suit, Pat Larissa Rivka, and Moshe Michael, Moshe Michael, Ben Larissa Rivka. Shemi Rehotam, the Paul Melimeta, Lezivuk Hagun, the Hazor Amen. Okay, guys, the Ramak, Rav Moshe Cordovero, we know that he learned with the Arya Kadosh. The Shla, I believe, the Shla says they learned together for six months, it hasn't been proven. Who are we to speak against the Shla? But we do know for a fact that the Ari did come to Tzfat and did meet the Ramak. That's for sure. He does quote him in Shari Mamari Rashbi in one of his books. It's called The Gates of the Rashbi. He does quote the Ramak. And we do know that they both agreed on a very big thing against the other Kabbalists, which is, is this world in cycles or are we in the only cycle? That means were there worlds before us with human beings that lived here and everything got destroyed and there was another cycle and got destroyed it? Like a physical world, Mamash, with Mamash like 7,000 years and destroyed? Or are we the only Shemitah? The Kabbalists held that there were different Shemitahs before us with dinosaurs and Neanderthals and stuff like that. The Orachayim held this belief. The Lubavitcher Rebbe's also held these beliefs. The Ari was against this belief. The Rikanati held this belief. Rabbeinu Bahai held this belief. But the Ramak was against this. And in the footsteps of the Ramak, when Morin of Rabbeinu, Ari Kadosh, he was against this whole Shemitah cycle. There's no Shemitah cycle, Shemitah cycle. We're the only one. We're the only cycle. Okay? And that the world seems old is because the world was created at a certain age. Okay? It was created at a certain age. Okay, that's one point that they agreed on. We also, the Ramak, he has a magnum opus called the Orchard of Pomegranates. Don't try learning this book because it is very, very difficult to learn. It's at least 500 pages. How do you say the small letters, the fine, fine print. print, like fine, fine print. Every page is four Amudim, one, two, three, four. Very hard, it's an encyclopedia of Kabbalah, basically, before him. It's the Ramat took all the Kabbalah before him and made an encyclopedia. And he called it the um, uh, Orchard of Pomegranates. The Ariya Kadosh came to Tzfat after the Ramak died. He took over as the Kabbalist of Tzfat. He was unanimously accepted because, as Rechaim Vital wrote, he knew the language of animals. He could tell what leaves were saying. He read your forehead like it was a piece of paper. He told you what your Gilgul was when he saw you. What you have to, what Torah you have to learn. Because you know, we're all made in this world to learn actually a certain part of the Torah. We learn everything because... We don't know. Right. So he knew what part of the Torah you have to learn. Hmm. What part is connected to your Shorish. What's your Gilgul. What's your Tikkun. I mean, Ashrav Misherato. With Zochet to see his son, and after him, there are Ashash, Baal Shem Tov, obviously, Ramchal, Gro. Also, we're all great tzaddikim. And there are many tzaddikim I heard from my Rebbe, I never met him. There was a rabbi who lived in Shkunat Abukhar and called Rabbi Pinchas Mugdas. He died about a couple of years ago. He would tell you when you would come in, 
who's your Gilgul and stuff like that. Rav Muadib used to tell me this when I used to learn by him way back when he said, Rav Mugdasi. He was Persian. He said, you go in, he would tell you, you're Gil- if, I guess he had a Zakhut or something, or you would know him. I never went into him. Rav Muadib said, he said he went in. He didn't tell me he was anything. Roshel, the head of God. So we are learning now. The great one of the greatest farm that Ramak wrote. It was actually it's a kind of like a kuntris. It's a notebook. It's called Tomer and Devora, the, the the date palm tree of Devora. It talks about how to be like God, how to copy God. That's basically what the whole book is about. Now we know God has ten attributes: Keter, Chokhmah, Bina, Chesed, Giburat, Tiferet, Netzachot, Yisod, and Malchut. So He goes through every attribute and He tells you how God uses that attribute and how you should copy Him. The only difference is not difference, but the only like exception is in the first gate has thirteen chapters, but small ones. So Keter has thirteen. Why thirteen? And he goes through every one of the 13. So now that I told you this, I gave you basically the gist of the book. Okay, it's a short book. Maybe it's 25 pages, something like that. Yeah, 25 pages from page from page 70 to page 112. No, it's like 40 pages. And um, I we used to learn this book religiously. When we were just starting, it's like this book was like our Tehillim. And uh, I give you just an introduction. This book speaks against one midah more than anything else, and that's anger. Yes. Like he tells you, like if you want to be like God, the one thing you should run away from is anger. Like never get angry. Like never, even for God. Wow. Don't ever get angry, Pinchas. ever. Huh? Pinchas. I know you want to bring Pinchas in. Maybe Pinchas wasn't angry when he did it. Zealous. <laughs> Maybe we just zealous, right? <laughs> Uh, but, that, but that's that, like if you talk if you learn to learn the keter like it's Everyone like no nope. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> deep inside you're angry right you can act like you're not but deep inside is there but but I'm just telling you like like that's his is like the angry, first chapter is anger only if you act it out? no not not the way if I'm angry inside if I don't act it out it's just hurt listen I'm gonna tell you something when you get angry you release cortisol in your brains. And you cannot act it out, but it's still being released. Like the stress is there. The stress is there. It's true, you might not be Chayab 150 fast or 150 dips in the mikveh like there are Benish Fai says. But you're 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 definitely releasing releasing that stress inside of you, right? Imagine if you when you would never get angry. You would be like an angel walking in this world, right? There are people like that, by the way. It's naturally very complicated, but that's natural. It's not something that they worked upon, right? Obviously, all of us over here, we are very angry people when we were younger, and life taught us to be very patient. But we still have ways to go. Our wives are teaching you. Wives teach you, your kids teach you, your students teach you. Life teaches you how to be a patient person, and basically what life teaches you is that you're not in control of anything. When you're angry, you think you're in control of everything. What the Ramak tries to teach you in in Tomar Devorah is that if you get angry, you're basically clogging up those pipes that God reveals himself in. So without further ado, let's read the first chapter. Let's start the first chapter of Tomei Devora. I want to get at least to the second part of the first chapter, right? Ha'adam, a man, ra'uishi dame lechono. He must strive to emulate his creator. Va'az besot, and then he will be... Hatsura Eliona, you're gonna be as if you are the uh, supernal image of God. The more you copy him, the more the worlds believe that you're him. No. They see you, they feel like you're Hashem. Because really, that's the way it's supposed to be. A man is supposed to say something, the angels are supposed to say, Amen. Oh, supposed to, they're supposed to listen to you. That's why we don't do Kabbalah Ma'asit, by the way, today. Because you're swearing the angels, but they look at you and be like, who are you to make us? So they'll do what you say, if you have a zakut, and then they'll get revenge on you. So we don't touch Kabbalah Ma'asit. Unless you have that, the guts to do so. 
שאילו ידומה בגופו ולא במנהלות, because your body actually corresponds to God's מידות, but your actions don't. And if, you don't, if your actions don't match how your body is, which God created your body in the image of his 10 spherot, you're a liar in God's supernal image. And they'll say on you, you look very beautiful. But your actions are the same as him. Right? By the way, part of those actions, by the way, Part of those action, part of those tsura is having a beard. But tsura el yona includes a beard. Zeir is a shorter beard, Arich is a longer beard. Right? So a beard is part of the tsura el yona. Gabriel. He's growing yet. Yeah. Oh, you're growing. Share ikar. Hatselim vadmut ha el yona he pulled out. The main point of looking like the image, quote unquote, of God, is to actually copy him in action. Don't just look like it. Emulate. Emulate him. Very beautiful. Now, I want to tell you all the listeners over here, you don't look like God. You look like the attributes he created. Nobody can look like God. God doesn't have an image. Whoever says God has an image is a kofel be'ikar. Elochelek lo'olam abba. You look like the image that he created, which is Yud K. His attributes, right? His name. What's the point of looking like his attributes? The way your body is, your fingers, right? And if you don't copy him, you don't emulate him. Ah. First, you have to try to emulate Keter. Which are the 13 midot shadrachamim, the 13 attributes of mercy. Whoa. That's hard. So he already starts off the book in the hardest job ever. Just yeah. don't ever get angry. The rest of the book is easy. The first part of the book is the hardest. The whole 13 attributes is don't get angry. You're asking me? <laughs> I have no idea. I assume he wasn't. I don't remember any stories that he was. <laughs> Most rabbis weren't angry. They were... so, yeah, I don't agree with you. I think many rabbis were very big kapdanim. Mm -hmm. That's anger? Don't get angry now. That's, huh? not, that's not anger. Kapdan is a person who's very... Uh, Particular. Uh, Strogi. Strogi. Stringent. 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 Or, um, that comes mm -hmm. from the shortage of anger. Yeah. Uh, Kapdanu, this comes from kas. How do you know that God is never angry? He says in the Navi, Mi el kamocha, who is the God like you? No se avon, you carry sin. Over al pesha, you pass over avonot. Lisherit nachalato, to his nation. Lo hechzik laad apo, he never holds a grudge. He always wants to find the good in you. Yeshuv Yerachameinu, he will come back and have mercy. Yichbosh Avonoteinu, if our sins go up, he will put them down. Tashlich bimsodyam, kol chatotam, he throws our Averot into the deep sea. That's Tashlich, where do we, where do we say this? Tashlich. Titen emet leyakov, give truth to Yaakov. Chesed to Avraham, chesed to Avraham. Remember, he doesn't mention here Isaac. Isaac is Gevura. Asher nishbat al avoteinu That you swore to our fathers Mi mekedem Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov Im ken, therefore Ra'ui shi timtsa'eno bo Shos mito, shos mito ta'eru You must have these 13 attributes in you Aren't you? You have them whether you use them or not? You have to use them I'm saying people are born with them anyway You're born with them, right. but you gotta use them You gotta emulate it now we will be mefaresh. What are these thirteen attributes? And today we'll do the first one. Okay. Number one, me et. Now remember, he's not doing the amorai amonai kiel rachum bechem. Why? Those are actually on a lesser level than the miel kamochas. Wow. Yeah. Miel kamochas the pnimiut. Amonai amonai is the chitzoniut. Moshe Moshe Rabbeinu didn't need to use the pnimiut. He went to the and lower level. He went to the lower level. Micha used the pnimiut. Right? Micha. So the first one, Miel Kamoch. What does that mean? Who is a God like you? 
It doesn't say mi amonai kamocha. It doesn't say mi havaya kamocha. It says mi el kamocha. Because remember, the first tikkun is keneged the meitzar, and that's kel, kel, kel from Elohim. Hamida azot, huh? What? Yeah, there's two. There's two parts. And both are called kel and kel. They're represented by the name kel. Thirteen in your beard. Mi el kamocha, mi el kamocha, mi el kamocha. Right. So look, when it's... 13 in each side? All together, it's 13. No, yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course, yeah. Because some tikkunim have two. Because some tikkunim have two sides, correct. Some tikkunim have two sides. Middle is one, always. Middle is one. Tikkun shlosh, is tikkun shmoa. I don't want to get into that right now. Mi el kamocha. Mi el kamocha. Mi el kamocha. That's your pelot. Yeah. Don't cut off your peot. Don't fade your peot. No, I don't. I didn't tell you to grow it out. I just said don't cut it. And number one is good though, no? That's not number one. That's but, sure. No, but I'm saying <laughs> a one. As long as you can grab it. As long as you don't grab it. Hamida, so this mida, more. The question is, what's grab? Huh? Don't they say you have to fold it? You have to fold it. No, no, grab it. It's just. Yeah, number two. Yeah, number two. Number two. Number two is good. Number two is better. Now you're bringing in something totally different. Why, why are you bringing in? Is there any breast lovers here? <laughs> no. Why are you bringing this stuff up? All right. Go Next. Hamida. So this mida is talking about Hashem Melech Neela. This is supposed to make you cry. The first time I read this in my life, I cried. God is a God that's bullied. Bullied? He's a bullied God. By us, okay. yeah. Kabu we bully him. Umelech ne'elav. With our averot, kabu it's like we we put him down all the time. Umelech ne'elav. You know what ne'elav is? You put a person down, Wait, and down, and then he just like Why? he takes it. And this is because just averot or something else. What else? What, what else is there? The world is a mitzvah and avera. What else? You you play the guitar for him? I'm thinking more it's averot that be done. Purpose that no. that no. Sovel elbon. God holds his elbon. I don't want to say this, but he holds that. He holds that. You put him down. He he handles it. This is the answer back. Amad Sadiq. I see you hold elbon. I've seen kids hold it. In school, to a certain point, till they explode. Hashem is holding his elbow for three thousand years. Imagine having a, a, somebody squat in your house for three thousand years, and you could take it out in a second. So very little bon. Self control. Controls. There's a plan. Kotov. Mashelo yichileo ra'ayon. Something you can't even fathom, says the Rama. How Hashem handles his elbow. I'm saying this, I'm getting water in my eyes. Obviously, he knows and sees everything. Without a doubt. There's no scratching a second that you don't live by his power. Imagine. He gives you life at the same moment you're putting him down. Basically, we're the kids and parents. <laughs> kids and parents. It should have been at the moment that you go against him, you should take away his, the life source from you. He doesn't do that. So, well, Elbon. Nobody left him. There would be a couple of guys. I mean, yeah. Not only that, you use his power that he gives you life. To do the other against them. Loma on he still gives it to you. As a parent, you, you understand this. Not that Hashem even gives you the power to do even more Averot. Gives you that free will. And at that moment, you take that power that He gives you and you're Machis against Him. God handles it. 
He holds it in. Velo tomai sheno yacholim no. Don't say that he cannot take it away from you. He could. Chas v'shalom. Hayu bekuchu kamer li avish al ragad. At the same moment, he could dry you up in a second. Just like he did like Yerav Am ben Nevat. Remember when the Navi came to him and he said to him, you're going to go, you're going to be destroyed, you're gonna, your bones will be burned on this, on this Mizbech that you did to Abu Dazayah. And then Yerav Am wanted to kill the Navi. At that moment, the, Navi's, the Yerav Am's hand dried up and he became like a loose limb. If I should want he could destroy you a person in a second. Just like he did to Yerav Am ben Nevat. Im koze, she'akoch biyado, he has that power, like zira koch nishpahu, God should have said, since you're sinning against me, so you think you're so strong. So use your own power to sin. Use your own power to do Allah. Why should you use my power? He still gives it to you. He holds the elbon. He still gives the guy life. That's called patience. You can't even comprehend that patience. There's millions of people in the world, as we're speaking, right? I'm talking about Jews, I'm not talking about Goyim, forget about them. I'm talking about Jews that at this moment they're doing Averot and they're all getting Hashem's Shefa and He still gives it to them. And He handles that patience and He's patient with them. They're going to be Choser B'Tshuva. They're going to be Choser B'Tshuva. They're going to be Choser B'Tshuva. They're going to handle They're going to do it. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. And that's why we say, that's why the Malachi Asharet call God Melech Alu. A God that handles Elbon. Like he handles that. The burden. It's not, it's, not, it's not a burden. It's more than a burden. It's when you put him down. He handles that. It's, it's in the book of Hechalot. And that's what it means. Miel that's the first. That's the first of the 13 attributes. Guys, it's very interesting. When you're going to say Slichot tomorrow morning. Think about this for a second when you say Kel Rachum Bechanu. You say Kel. Mi Al Kamachum. You say Kel Rachum Bechanu. Think about it a second. Hashem Sobel El Bon. Imagine how much love is going to be awakened in your heart at that moment. Hashem Sobel El Bon. Ata El Bal Chesed Umetiv. You're a God that's Bal Chesed Umetiv. El Bal Koach Lekem. You could do the biggest nekama if you want. Bele Sof Echad. Just let us do nekama and just take my power away. You still wait for me and you hold it and you keep it in until I do Teshuvah. Now, how do I copy that? <laughs> That's how Hashem does it. How do I copy that? You have to emulate him, no? How do you copy that? Patience. Practice patience. Practice patience. <laughs> Even if somebody you know that you're doing him good and he hurt you, still give it to the guy. I'm gonna be a trapka, I'm gonna be a, sh- a shmatter, I'm gonna be this, I'm gonna be a. I don't know what other word you wanna say. Why should I do with him? Just to act like Miel it's a scary thought. I don't know many people who do this. I'll be honest with you. I don't know many people. I don't. I can't even think of one. I can't even think of one. I can't even think of one. Sorry. It's a couple. It's a couple. It should be stepped on. It be stepped on. It okay. What should I tell you? That's what he said. Did I did I translate verbatim or I didn't? That's what marriage is. I'm telling you. Also, there's a lot of that. Means there's not a lot of that in the tunnel. There's a reason why you're doing it, but that's what marriage is. But at the same time, you're still, you're still, I, I think it's not more marriage, it's more kids. You. I think it's more, I towards think it's more, kids too. Oh, my I goodness. think it's kids more. Today, you should have seen what my son said to Yeah, your wife, yeah, I'm saying that, but it's more children. But it's not a children. Yes. But he's telling you, Arezo Mida. Of course, there's levels to it. I'm not saying that. Now let's get out of here and be shmatas to everybody. That's not what he's saying. That's always my problem. So yeah. what's the, where's the game? That's yeah, always the game. Yeah, yeah. Step by step, step by step. First to your immediate family, then to your friends. You have to first trade. If you're going to do it right away to everybody, you're going to blow up in the day. Yeah. A lot of people, they do it to friends, but not to family. That's also an issue. That's good. Not because, not because of Miel Kamoka. It's because they uh, they embarrass from the person. They care what he says. That's not from Miel Kamocha. 
That's for the different. That's for the wrong reasons. That's for the wrong reasons. So, anyways, we're gonna end over here. It's the first meter. So see, every meter is small. Paragraph, two paragraphs each. Next, we're gonna do no savon. Wait, wait. You thought this was bad? <laughs> Not bad. Eh? You thought this was tough? Oh, the next one is even worse. The uh, this is the first the preview, right? <laughs> what is Hashem's sablanut? Amen. Amen.